the mission of 10 times 1,000 project is really about closing the digital skills gap for the emerging markets to develop 1,000 tech leaders, tech talents each year that they want to do it for the next 10 years. We are really also invite tech talents from different emerging markets. It's really very open and very inclusive and we wish to have more people join the journey. People, they come into the uh, 10 times 1,000, it's not only about skill set, but also about leadership, about uh, inspiration, about innovation. This class is just the beginning of Love Na Nani. I'm very excited with the curriculum of the 10 times 1,000. It's very comprehensive. It's very, very practical and also very inspirational. I wish the whole trainings will be more fun, more exciting because it's more about uh, how we can really change ideas by learning from each other, inspire each other to make an impact on the future. It's not only about uh, this 10 times 1000, it's about many, many more. Welcome everyone to this 10 times 1000 platform. So first up today, we'll have a short keynote from Josek Luminzi Mudiri on FinTech in Africa. He is the co-lead of Digital Financial Services um, Advisory Africa for the International Finance Corporation. And uh, Josek has worked in financial services, capital markets, and telecommunications industries for over 25 years. He has experience working with clients in over 40 countries across Africa and the Middle East. And Josek has been at the heart of the evolution of technology across Africa and has written a number of publications on the topic of financial inclusion, as well as financial services on the The 10 times 1000 platform to me is an opportunity for me to also learn from the other markets. It gives me an opportunity to understand how the other markets are operating. And secondly, it enables me as well to share my knowledge and my experiences with the different participants on this platform. Now, working across Africa, there's so much knowledge that we come, we come across. However, disseminating this knowledge needs to come through a platform. And this is an opportunity for me to actually share this knowledge. So it is important for me in the sense that it helps me to learn, but also to share. Very, very importantly is the ability for me to leverage this platform to bring on board where I can people that I'm coming across different markets who may want to understand a little bit more about fintech and they would like to participate and become better leaders in future i intend to use this platform as much as possible to onboard people that i work with who want to actually learn more and to develop their markets better okay thank you very much and um, i would like to thank all the participants that are coming and joining us today um, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes uh, just talking through what we see based on the work that we are doing across the region and also the experiences that I've had, um, you know, just talking to different people across the region as I do my work. Uh, and also um, as I try to make, uh, you know, comparisons with other regions. So it will not be it will not be very good if I don't introduce um, a little bit about, you know, um, what World Bank Group is. Uh, IFC, you probably may be aware, is part of the World Bank Group. And the World Bank Group, uh, you know, is, um, you know, comprises IFC and what you typically call uh, World Bank itself, which is IBRD. Um, and within IFC, we have basically a, a number of units. We have what we call infrastructure group um, that is involved very, very closely in the fintech space. Um, we have uh, policy and regulation, regulatory arms that are very critical in this space as well. We have uh, a disruptive technologies and funds unit, which is a very, very important part of the International Finance Corporation, 
in terms of uh, looking at disruptions that are happening across different markets. Um, and also Financial Institutions Group, which is basically the area uh, that I am part of. Financial Institutions Group works closely with financial institutions. And you know, as you may very well know, there is a very close correlation between financial institutions uh, and the real sector, especially because of digital. So we are the light, one of the largest um, you know, investors in emerging markets. Uh, we, you will find us almost everywhere. And so we have a presence um, in some of the most difficult countries uh, across, across the globe and across Africa. And that places us in a relatively unique uh, place to kind of see how this digital uh, and financial inclusion is interacting with people. And we think that digital is at the core of financial inclusion. And that's why we have a heavy focus uh, in that space. Just at a high level, we, we, we've invested in quite a number of institutions as IFC. Um, and uh, you know, whether we are doing advisory projects or we are doing as an institution doing investment projects, um, we've been very, very, very active. <clears throat> what I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we look at in terms of fintech and in terms of digital finance. You know, the interplay is quite um, is quite tight, really. Um, when we talk about fintech and the verticals, we people have different definitions, but for us, we we have. Um, I'm going to use here just a simple uh, four-party definition, uh, which comprises fintech. Uh, one is payment infrastructure. And here you have players that are playing in the ATM and switching environment, uh, payment processing. Uh, there's been an increased and rapid growth in MPOS. And, and, and you have merchants that are beginning to accept payments um, in a digital sense. You have account service providers. And account service providers here include what typically you call uh, mobile wallet providers electronic wallet providers, but then also even the banking system. Increasingly, many people there are beginning to, to cross over and to offer much more fintech. Um, another area that is very critical is cross-border infrastructure. Uh, moving money from one country to another in terms of remittances, um, using digital infrastructure, whether it is agent-based, uh, traditional, you know, um, uh, traditional over-the-counter environments, or beyond over-the-counter environments, you also have different, uh, you know, like uh, wallet-to-wallet uh, remittances, etc. We we have airtime infrastructure, etc. We look at that also as very, very important in digital and cross-border infrastructure is becoming also very important, especially as it relates to uh, international trade or regional trade. Collection networks and the collection infrastructure is also another key area. Um, we have lending services, and lending services are now being performed by different types of players, uh, whether it is financial service providers um, uh, doing consumer or SME lending using digital. We also have marketplaces um, where people can interact, capital market uh, infrastructure, where using basically leveraging capital markets in order to drive digital, and lastly the insure tech space. Now, insure tech is, as we all know, insurance is um, in Africa. The penetration is very low. The most insured country in, in Africa is South Africa, but still, insurance penetration in a country like South Africa is 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 quite low. You know, is still less than twenty percent, probably in the region of fifteen percent. And we see digital beginning to play a very important role in driving insurance uh, by introducing new ways of, of, um, of, of driving insurance. And so insure tech is, is a new and growing area as well. What are we seeing as the evolving trends um, around the FinTech space? And as I said, there is a very close relationship between FinTech, the tradition of FinTech and what uh, financial service providers are, are providing uh, traditionally, you know, such as store of accounts and, and all these types of, of products. The one thing that is becoming increasingly visible is 
is basically the emergence of startups. So across Africa, the number of startups, and I'll share a little bit um, a, a survey, uh, an opportunity survey that was done by McKinsey uh, recently. Emergence, emerging startups are you know, appearing everywhere. You have a few pockets that are very strong, much stronger than others, but still we are seeing that growth uh, you know, permeate across the region. The only difference is you have many more smaller startups than the bigger, uh, bigger fintechs, simply because of resource. Uh, many of these countries uh, are still struggling with, with resources. And basically, running a fintech, as you well, well know, uh, is, 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 is not cheap. The second thing we are seeing increasingly is that the drivers of financial inclusion across the continent are largely in many markets mobile money operators or what we call payment service providers right from tunisia where you have payment service provider regulations that have come in place you have um, countries like uh, morocco that have payment service provider licenses nigeria you have mobile money operators in countries like kenya like mpesa uh, you have uh, ghana you have tanzania um, not to say that they are the only ones but they seem to still dominate and to be the largest drivers. Of course, there are some markets across Africa, such as South Africa, that are largely driven uh, by just the financial service providers, the traditional financial service providers uh, transforming themselves and countries like Mauritius as well. But largely financial inclusion in Africa is driven by mobile money providers. We're seeing a lot of innovation um, creation of uh, marketplaces coming up in different markets. Uh, we're seeing um, quite a number of apps appearing. We are also beginning to see in a very big way uh, new platforms and convergence. You know, we have platforms like Jumia, um, Jumia which is in, in, in many markets across the continent. We have plat platforms like Glovo, which are also you know, quite, quite, um, you know, that are really, really expanding across the continent. But these platforms, what they do is they bring trade or the traditional business such as MS, SME transactions, e-commerce, etc. And with that, the convergence of digital. And by digital, some of them are beginning to con to bring in, you know, like credit um, and those kinds of transactions. Evolving regulation, we we're seeing uh, lots of evolving regulation in different markets. Um, for example, you know, Sub-Saharan Africa tended to be more open than Northern Africa, but Northern Africa regulation is really opening up significantly. Uh, in some countries, we actually have very specific fintech regulation like Ghana, uh, countries like Tunisia. Um, and, and this is a trend that is happening across all kinds of markets. Uh, in terms of service offer, product expansion, we're seeing um, convergence growing more into microinsurance, credit, um, G2P in some of these markets is like the key product that's actually attracting business uh, into these areas. Um, and, um, and other advanced solutions such as just the typical uh, payments. We are seeing lots of uh, partnerships coming up and also uh, very, very much you know, the banking services. Uh, and banking service providers, like for example, new banks like Time Bank, like Discovery Bank in South Africa. And uh, you have a few in, in Nigeria, uh, what you would typically call neo banks that are coming up in order to play a dis disruptive law role in this FinTech space. Having, having said that, I wanted to just also share a little bit. Um, a study I came across, uh, it was done by McKinsey just recently, actually. Um, and uh, overall, the study itself, of course, says that you know the penetration of fintech in some countries like Kenya is quite significant. Kenya and, and South Africa is, 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 is very, very, very high. Uh, but here they're trying to estimate like growth rates in a, in a number of markets uh, across the region. And McKinsey estimates that fintech revenues 
are likely to grow eight times to reach 30 billion by 2020. Now that's huge. Uh, when you think about it in terms of if you as an innovator or you as an entrepreneur are going to play a role in this space, there's so much opportunity for you in terms of business creation, the opportunity to basically leverage the expanding fintech space in order to offer your products, in order to interact with customers. What they are also saying is the largest percentage or proportion of growth will be in Ghana. Uh, maybe probably because Ghana you know, has begun to, to, to basically pick up. Uh, countries like Kenya and South Africa are still quite high, but you know, they, uh, so the growth rate in, in Ghana in the other countries is likely to be much, much higher um, as a percentage on a month to month or year to year basis. The second group, where growth is still going to be uh, very, very, very high is, is the Francophone West African countries. Um, what we've seen generally across Africa, the Francophone region tends to work together because they're even part of the same uh, zone. You have the Uemoa zone in, in West Africa. You have the Simoa zone in Central Africa. Uh, the Simoa zone has, of course, Chad, Cameroon, uh, Central Africa Republic. Uh, Gabon, those countries in that corridor. So they tend to work together. They have a common currency, Wemoazon, which has more Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, um, uh, Burkina, <coughs> Burkina and Niger, Benin, Togo. Uh, those countries also have a common currency and their regulation is kind of driven, driven together. And so their growth rate is likely to, to work together jointly. The third bucket where growth is going to be very high, but a little lower than the other three, two, two zones is Nigeria and Egypt. Incidentally, these are the most populous countries in Africa. We've seen a lot happening in Nigeria. Um, you've seen a lot of expansion in Nigeria. The opportunity in Nigeria is always huge. I mean, over 250 million people, um, brilliant population, lots of money flowing into the fintech space. Um, and so there's a lot happening there, but a lot more is going to happen there. I mean, the country has barely scratched the surface. The, surface. the opportunity is huge. Same thing with Egypt. If you look at Egypt as well, huge population, over 100 million people, uh, you know, quite, uh, quite a few fintechs there have, um, have really picked up, you know, look at Wari, uh, sorry, um, uh, uh, there's the, the, the there's the e-commerce um, sorry the, the payment uh, fintech there in that country you have souk as well and a few other fintechs um, in in Egypt and so growth is according to McKinsey is going to grow in that in that shape but it doesn't mean that the rest of Africa will not grow the rest of Africa will grow significantly but those are just the pockets that according to McKinsey they have identified. So we are seeing that there is evolving regulation, among others, which is driving growth. Now, what is driving growth? A couple of factors that are, grow are driving growth across the continent. The first thing is the COVID-19 and the need to social distance. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 disrupted the financial landscape over the past three, four years. And that disruption has been, uh, has been been very important uh, to drive fintech growth. So, for example, you remember many countries uh, actually even put in place incentives to try and drive social distancing. Uh, the central bank in West Africa, central banks in East Africa, they try to put in place measures. I know that North Africa, for example, they actually they had very very rigid regulations, but they had to soften the regulations in order to enable. Uh, some of these transactions that are enabled by fintechs. And we are seeing a lot happening just because of uh, the, the spillover effect of that. There is evolving regulation um, of, across, across the, the region, again, driven also by COVID-19, but also just, you know, just the need to drive financial inclusion. Another very key point is improving internet penetration. There has been improvement, significant improvement improvement in internet penetration across the region 
uh, the fiber, the whole thing around fiber, uh, cutting across the whole, con the whole continent. Uh, you have various uh, fiber zones going around the continent. Um, and, and even some areas that were previously unpenetrated are actually now becoming, uh, you know, penetrable. There's a demanding population, largely driven by young people like yourselves, who are part of this, uh, uh, of this forum, because they want new products, they want uh, agency, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And they want to connect to the global world, the global mindset driven by improved connectivity. So just thinking about this thing is happening in, in, in the US, this thing is happening in China, this thing is happening in Europe, why should it happen in my country? And what we've seen because of that, those factors driving growth is that there have been quite significant benefits. And some of the benefits include, for example, a lower cost of, of access. So financial services just continue to improve because the cost of access is lower, they're cheaper. Um, fintechs and, and the growth is actually helping to address climate change in some places. We are seeing a lot of interesting innovations that help with climate change. There have also been better linkages between ecosystems, whether it is agri, uh, uh, agri value chain, or um, it is uh, SME, um, you know, it is um, SME value chains, etc. So we're seeing lots and lots and lots of that happening across the region. There's a reducing gender gap, gap because the factors that used to limit uh, women. Uh, becoming, um, you know, opening accounts or transacting are now beginning to close because financial services are at the, thick of your, uh, at the uh, tip of your fingertips. There's wider insurance access growing. We're seeing improved integration of financial systems because in many markets, you know, because of fintech, you have API integrations and other aspects and job creation. The fintechs, we cannot underestimate the fintechs. There is job creation that's happening um, a lot because of that. And so we actually welcome you to become part of this uh, very, very big and good story. Despite uh, the challenges, uh, so, so there are some challenges, but despite that, um, there are some key success factors. Uh, one of the key challenges that uh, we face, especially when we talk to some of these uh, entrepreneurs, is the you know struggling to reach scale and and profitability. Uh, why? Because you know just getting the business model right is not easy. In some markets, still there's regulatory challenges uh, and policy challenges. Um, in some cases, there are no regulations in place to enable. Uh, certain types of fintechs that you may want to drive. Uh, for example, wealth creation fintechs in some markets is, is almost a no-go area. Um, they are struggling with governance and also management. And in many cases, founder syndrome. Very bright people setting up fintechs, very good minds. But now the problem that happens then is when it comes to scaling, you the founder wants to scale still treat that fintech like a personal property instead of thinking about it like something that is for the greater good. And so that affects also uh, how the fintech is run so that it becomes uh, a better institution. Agility and willingness to keep experimenting. There's a lot of experimentation required in order to make fintechs um, extremely uh, successful. And lastly, resources and resourcing. Um, you all have had recently, uh, for example, in a country like Kenya, Google has come in there, set up a regional office. Microsoft has set up a regional office. Amazon has set up a regional office. And all these institutions are looking for skills. Um, and there are others that are still coming in, you know, and in different countries, different markets. Now, that means that this talent that is very rare and expensive, become uh, very rare and expensive, becomes even more expensive. And so if you are setting up a FinTech, for you to afford them, I've actually been talking to a number of uh, FinTech uh, providers and they just cannot afford the resources. So if you are small, it becomes very difficult for you to basically compete. But 
what are the key success factors? We see a number of success factors that are making uh, the fintechs across the region successful. Uh, one is the value proposition. You have to get a very focused value proposition. Um, when it, yes, you may be smart. Yes, you may have a couple of ideas, but stick to one idea, focus on it, drive it, succeed with it, and then scale. So most of these fintechs are based on an idea and they've become successful because of that. Think about people like, uh, you know, tech firms like Wasoko. Think about the M-Pesas of the world, uh, M-Pesa in East Africa, just focused on a specific idea. Think about a flutter wave in Nigeria, um, or think about a time bank uh, in, in, in South Africa. So you have to focus on an idea and drive it. Secondly, you have to actually rapidly drive customer acquisition uh, because you need to scale at a very fast rate in order for you to attract revenue and also to attract investment. Mm -hmm. um, and so that speed, making sure that you, know, you scale fast is, is, is very critical. A very clear revenue model, which is linked to the value proposition and the customer acquisition part. A very clear revenue monet, model in order to monetize the business. Um, if you don't try to monetize the business now, in the Western world, it's usually easier you first get the customer acquisition right all along, and then you begin to monetize later. You may not even know how to monetize. Unfortunately, in Africa, the story is a little different. You have to start monetizing early to give an indication of the revenue uh, potential. We also need to make sure that the, you are innovative as innovative as possible. You need to think beyond the ordinary, ability to shift focus on and when, uh, and when required. So make sure that you know, when you're building your FinTech, the ideas flow, something, you try something, it fails, try, it fails, be willing to change and to pivot. And one mistake that people assume is that uh, when you're building for the online, you must always stay online. Unfortunately, the African customer in many cases is also offline. So you have to consider um, basically building your, your business, not just, to sell, not just to target the customer online, but to target the customer online and to go offline to get the customer online. So you have to make sure that that works. And lastly, and very importantly, is regulatory compliance. Now, regulatory compliance means two things. One, when the regulator says certain things, you must comply with whatever they say. If the regulator is not clear, you want to build with the regulator. It's important that whatever idea you have, you go to the regulator and you get their buy-in as early as possible in order for you to actually build and grow with the regulator. Even as the regulator builds any regulations around that, they are building those regulations based on uh, what you are putting in place in order to, to, in order to make sure that, uh, that you you know, what you are building is safe for the customer. Because at the end of the day, the regulator um, is doing everything they're doing in order to protect uh, the customer. So in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's the story of um, what we are seeing uh, across the continent. The FinTech space is new. I think we are just at the beginning. It's an opportunity for all of you to actually tap in and expand. Um, it's wonderful that you are part of this um, initiative, yeah, 10 by 1000, because it then helps you to begin to think about how to actually implement some of these things, you know, what kind of business models, what examples do we have um, of, of people or entrepreneurs who are actually playing a role in the fintech space, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, Thank you very much, and I hand over back to you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joseph, for the very interesting presentation. It is indeed a very exciting time to be on the African continent. Um, so we're going to open up for a little bit of Q&A. Um, before I hand over to the audience, Jason, I'm going to hand over to you for a quick question. Yeah, th Tahira, thank you so much. Uh, good day, everybody from Kigali, Rwanda. Joseph, first of all, thank you so much on behalf of 
the 10 times 1000 team and group and all of us for, for being a lecturer uh, for the FinTech Foundation program. And I wanted to kick off, Josek, if I may, uh, one question for you. You know, a big part of the 10 times 1000 platform is, is cross learning between countries, uh, between experiences. You had mentioned that, I think, in your interview. From what you're seeing, and there's a lot of opportunities across different African markets. Could you could you just comment on that? Why, why is it? Why do you find it important that there's all this cross learning? That it's not just you know I'm focused say on a specific country. Could you share a little bit of your thoughts there uh, to to our attendees today? Yeah, yeah. So cross learning helps uh, entrepreneurs to basically do a number of things. So what we found is they learn from the mistakes of others. If there are some mistakes that others committed, then by cross-learning, you are able to tell, okay, this is the wrong approach. Let me take a different approach uh, in terms of this. It also helps, cross-learning also helps um, someone who wants to implement something to basically see the opportunity. So for example, if you have an idea and you find that the idea you have uh, somebody in a country probably started a, a fintech three, four years ago, uh, working with maybe a thousand customers. And three, four years down the line, and you know now I'm talking in the context of uh, Africa, not the context of China. Uh, three years down the line, you, know, you are something like 100,000 users. That is huge, by the way, in Africa. And some of our countries, it's humongous. Then you can sense that, okay, I can actually achieve this kind of scale. So it's, it's good that um, you also learn from each other, understand uh, you know, what not to do, understand uh, the potential, but then also just share ideas and experiences and also just know what's available out there in terms of human resources, in terms of capacity, so, so that you can uh, improve whatever offer you're working on. Thank you, Joe Sick, and thank you again uh, for the partnership that I have seen and group have had over the years. So thank you. Thank you so much, thank you Joe Sick. You know, they say that a key sign of a good presentation is when people don't have questions because you were clear. <laughs> um, so I just see people saying thank you for all the knowledge that you've shared today. Um, I found thank it very you. interesting. Um, and as I can see, our audience found it very interesting as well. So just once again from the okay. AVH team as well, Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tahira. Thank you so much, uh, Jason. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Dongye. And all the learners, I wish you all the best. And I think we'll keep interacting also uh, on the platform. So uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Josek. Up, I would like to welcome Jason Powell, Senior Director of Ant Group and a Program Director of 10 Times 1000 and the Executive Director International of the Jack Ma Foundation. And he's going to introduce the 10 Times 1000 FinTech Foundation Program Flex. So Jason, over to you. Hey, thanks, Tahira. Uh, again, good day to everybody. Uh, we're here in beautiful Kigali. Um, and really excited about this session. And I'll tell you why, I'll tell you exactly why. Everyone that just did this poll, um, I'm seeing a few things, right? One, we're seeing that Sub-Saharan Africa, just as Josek said, uh, is really emerging on the FinTech space. If you look at 33% of the adults in Sub-Saharan Africa have a mobile money account, the largest region in the world, that's really an amazing statistic. But at the same time, um, there's quite a bit of people that answered, yes, they do know somebody that made their first digital payment during COVID, so over the last few years. So that means that at the same time that we're seeing this rapid growth, it also means that there's huge, huge, huge potential left. If you take a market like China, where Ant Group is based, where I've been working for the last decade, 80% of adults, made merchant digital merchant payments in 2021. That's an extremely high number. And I think 10 times 1,000 is interesting because what we're trying to do is to bring knowledge that's been developed, gained over multiple industries across the FinTech landscape 
across multiple countries and regions and to share that. And I think that's extremely important because FinTech is moving so fast that the minute you try to write something down on FinTech, it probably becomes outdated. Um, so really the power is in not only learning, but also learning from community. And, and I'll get into that a little bit more. So thank you again for joining the Scale Up event today. Uh, I want to share with you what, what is 10 times 1,000 and what is the opportunity today that you should take. So let me share a screen. 10 times 1,000 Tech for Inclusion, what is this all about? Uh, it is an open and global FinTech tra training platform. And our mission is to train at least 1,000 emerging talents and tech leaders each year for at least the next 10 years. That's why it's called 10 times 1,000. So 10 years, each year 1,000. This program was launched by uh, Ant Group and World Bank IFC in actually 2018. And we are targeting learners that have uh, at least three years of working experience, either in the fintech or digital economy related fields. So that's an overview of what 10 times 1,000 is. And we spent some time in thinking about this curriculum. What kind of fintech curriculum are we going to offer? Well, the first thing is we're going to offer you an, offer you an experience that's built for busy professionals. And so what does that really mean? It means that our videos are bite-sized. They range anywhere from two minutes to say five minutes, and you can take them on your pace. We'll test you with quizzes, and we'll also give you a co-learning opportunity uh, with your community. Getting into actually how the curriculum is designed, there's three parts. The first part is mindset. So we have lessons that will, you know, in, in no better words, open your mind in terms of how the digital economy is working today. There are lessons then that will go into knowledge. So actually very specific topics like blockchain, like AI, et cetera. And then finally, we have a set of lessons that are focused on skills. So that ranges everything from how do you deploy uh, certain products in a market or how do you scale? Um, so we go from the top end and down to the very specific. But what's clear though is, and 10 times 1,000 is not a coding platform. We don't teach uh, technical engineering skills. But what we're looking to support is how can we take fancy topics like AI, like blockchain, technologies like these and ones that are going to come in the future, how can we take them and provide a mindset around how to use them, but also a very practical experience that someone else has uh, in deploying these technologies. We want to take that and help you on your journey as you're looking towards financial inclusion. So that's really where we're at. We're a bit of inspiration, we're a lot of practicality, and really we're focused on how to use technology to solve solutions, solve problems. We're advised by Curriculum Steering Committee, and here's just a snapshot of all of the lectures that we've had from 2021. This year, we have a lot more as well. And what we've assembled are, in my view, the top leaders and practitioners on FinTech across the world. Now you see a lot of lectures from China and Asia. That's where we're started. That's where we're from. That's where a lot of our partners are. So of course, a lot of that representation is from Asia. That's also where FinTech has been growing rapidly over the years. But our goal is global. And so we will continue to add lectures, not only from Africa, but from other parts of the world as well. We work through partners. ABH is one of the partners of 10 times 1000. So everyone listening today, we only recruit through partners and through alumni referrals. And as you can see here, uh, we now have, gosh, probably almost 40 partners uh, around the world from every part of of, of, of every region that's focused on FinTech, uh, from Asia to Middle East, to Africa, to the West. And this is what it looks like. This is a, uh, this is FinTech Foundation Flex. 
And FinTown Foundation Flex is all delivered on our platform, 10 times 1000.org. You can see on the bottom right, we have Vince. He's the CEO of Dana, one of the largest fintechs in Indonesia luxury. And on the left hand side, you can see the, the control panel. Once you're accepted in, you register to a program, all the learning takes place online. Uh, it's not on mobile. You have to be in your laptop. Um, the FinTech, FinTech Foundation program Flex, once you sign in and you're accepted, it's a 28 day program, so four weeks. You have four weeks to complete it once you start. In that four week period, you'll go through a series of lessons, which I'll cover soon. Once you complete them, you will be issued on the top right, you can see a digital blockchain certified uh, by the IFC and Alipay, a digital certificate of completion. And so that's what you'll receive at the end. And following that, you'll get access to our community and importantly, other programs that we've already launched. And so this is a snapshot of how it looks. So let me go into the actual curriculum itself. This is FinTech Foundation program. So as I mentioned, we have mindset, knowledge, and skills. We start with financial inclusion. We start with digital technology. And we build a mindset of how do you use digital technology to drive inclusion. Next, you'll see a knowledge. We get into the tech. So as I saw in the survey, many of you uh, have deployed or understand cloud computing, uh, not, so, not as much on blockchain or AI. And so here, we get into it. How do you understand these technologies? And then finally, on the skill side, we have several leading CEOs and executives actually lecturing on how they've achieved scale or how they've solved pain points by using these different technologies. So this whole set is FinTech Foundation program. Uh, we also, also we launched it, we will be launching it in French so that our friends across the Francophone speaking countries can access it, can be part of the learning community as well. Here's some of the feedback. And we're so encouraged by it because learners from Pakistan to Nigeria uh, have found the value in the content, whether it's on key insights on scaling to how to think like a leader, and also think like a user, um, we're seeing some excellent feedback. So we're really excited about what we've been able to produce with our partners and we hope you enjoy it too. Here's a snapshot of the community. So some highlights of what we hope that you'll be joining. Um, great represented, representation from females, 31%. 90% of our learners are from developing markets, 22% from MSMEs. You'll see the spread geographically Southeast Asia, also South Asia, including Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, well represented. Africa is only 12%, but it should grow, and we hope that it grows uh, larger as well. And in terms of the breakdown by industry, we have industries of all types, ranging from big banks to entrepreneurs that are running their own fintech to those in the agricultural center, that Scott of sector that's trying to figure out how to leverage fintech for the business. We also have uh, government officials that have been training as well. So it's a quite a diverse uh, community. So let me sum this up. How do you sign for FinTech Foundation Flex? You need to have at least three years, three years working experience and in the FinTech or related field. And we take related actually quite broadly. Um, take the step, register for an account on 10 times 1000org and apply by ABH Partners link, which they will send following this event. The deadline is by the end of this month, October 31st. You must get on to the platform, apply so that you can start your study. We will review applications and provide a response within three business days. Once that happens and you're accepted, you can start learning on the platform anytime. So what we mean by that is once you're accepted into the program, you can start the day you're accepted, you can start Two days later, you can start three days later. But once you start, you have four weeks to complete. Okay, so, so once you start, don't, don't procrastinate. Don't wait till the very end. You've got four weeks. And once that four weeks is complete, then we will invite you to the community and then we'll 
be able to give you access to more programs. So I want to talk about that as well. We just launched the FinTech Expert Program, and this is a really an amazing set of lectures. Um, we have, again, mindset, knowledge, and skills. And what we've done is we've took the feedback from last year, and we went even deeper. And so when you see Dr. Chaha, uh, the second column, AI Tech Deep Dive, he gets, he gets into it much deeper. Same thing with blockchain, same thing with cloud. These are really nice deep dives. And finally, on the skill side, an amazing group of lectures ranging from the chief technology officer of Paytm, the largest fintech in India, uh, to our colleagues at Ant Group, and again, uh, an amazing masterclass by Ranga, who is the chief of product at Dana, again, the largest, one of the largest fintechs in Indonesia. So alumni from the foundation program will be given access to register for expert. You can't go straight there. You have to complete foundation first. Next month, we will be launching our first ever green fintech mini series. Again, alumni that have finished foundation program will be allowed to register for that. Really excited about this. It is a topic that is taking the minds of most of us uh, in FinTech. Um, policy, the environment, everything is pointing towards green sustainability. And so this is our beginning of this series that we'll be developing. So let me just sum everything up. 10 times 1000, .org today has a fintech foundation program with an expert program. We also been, will be releasing a green fintech mini series. What you see on the screen is the criteria to apply. And, um, and all I can say is that we really look forward for you to join the community. We look forward to you learning. Uh, we look forward to all the engagement. We have a really active WhatsApp group. Um, people are sharing all the time. People are helping each other all the time. And going forward, uh, we will continue to add more expert lecturers, add more curriculum, and we'll also be arranging events throughout the world. So let me stop here. Um, let me reiterate, uh, it's an excellent opportunity. We're only offering it through partners, including ABH. So if you're interested, take that step and sign up uh, by the end of this month. To hear it, thanks, and, and back over to you. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, we will share the link after the session. So expect, keep an eye on your inbox for an email from us. It was in the original EDM if you're very excited to get started. Um, but now I'm going to welcome Opayemi back um, for a quick discussion uh, with Jason. Um, so as mentioned before, Opayemi is an alumni of the prestigious 10 times 1000 Tech for Inclusion FinTech Expert Program. Um, so he's got some good insights into that next step in the deep dive that Jason was just talking about. So Jason Opayemi, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Tahira. Opayemi, thank, thank you for uh, being, uh, being with us today and being patient with uh, the tech issues. No, not a problem. You're welcome, Jason. Yeah, and, and Opayemi, um, you know, as one of our alumni, uh, just love to have you on. I'd love to, of course, see you in person one of these days. Hopefully yeah. we can get over to you in Nigeria. Um, but I, I'd love for you to share a little bit with, you know, some of the people listening. Uh, and, and I'll ask you, I'll just ask you a few questions. Um, I, I don't know if, if you've, you've probably already introduced yourself, so I'll probably skip that. But if you haven't, please do. All right, so we are we already introduced, um, I, I introduced myself a little bit, yeah, but just to say that uh, I've been in the industry, our uh, passion for inclusion technology, and uh, currently we're building um, we're building the industry grant of in energy inclusion, where we're using renewable energy to solve the energy deficiency in Nigeria, you know, uh, and then making financing possible as well, because we figured that the upfront investment is a little bit high for a typical person to acquire that assets. So what we then do is to provide that layer of financing for people, you know, so that it makes it easy. And then you then pay over a period of time, you know, so we, we've been able to impact a lot of businesses, a lot of small businesses, 
a lot of um, 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 people working class, people who have energy issues at home and all that, people who work remote and all that. We've been able to provide a lot of service, a lot of help. And then we've also been able to make money from it. Like I said, there is a lot of money to be made in inclusion technology. It is not just a social endeavor. You know, there's money there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank, thanks Olivia, for mentioning that. And that. That's really the point, right? Is, yeah. you know, technology is there to solve problems. It's there to solve problems and it's only sustainable when you have a business model that works. Um, yeah. And, and I, I especially want to make that point to um, learners across Africa because, you know, in China today, uh, we, yes, we are leveraging blockchain. We're using AI immensely, uh, mm -hmm. cloud computing, security. But not all of these technologies are going to work today mm -hmm. in the markets that our learners are listening or, or that are from. It's a timing issue, right? There, there's, there's not an issue of potential scale because Africa is huge population, but it's a, it's a question of timing. And what I, what, what I love about this program is that we're working with partners across the world to give different perspectives. Cause we all hear, we all hear a lot of fancy terms. Yeah. And the first thing that some entrepreneurs like, I need to get, I need to get AI or I need to get blockchain into my system. Mm -hmm. They don't even understand it yet, but they want it. Mm -hmm. So Opie, in your point of view, how, how do you see, let's call it the the sustainable or the appropriate adoption of technology in fintech, you know, from, okay, from so, your point so, of view. Yeah, so there's something that I always like to say that, um, you know, Africa is always the frog in technology. Africa, because we usually come late, we don't start from the beginning. We just jump at it wherever the world is, right? I would give you an instance. You know, so when the telecom industry started in Nigeria, Nigeria had maybe a few hundreds of thousands of landline and were a population of 150, 180 million at the time, right? You know, so we didn't think, when we wanted to develop the telecom industry, we were not thinking about doing landline again. We just jumped at the next generation technology, 2G, 3G, 5G, and that was it. You know, so, and then again, I'll give another example. Dubai is a much more finer city, much more modern city compared to London, you know, because London <laughs> is, is, is hold. You get what I mean? So Dubai has a lot of much more recent modern infrastructure. So that's one thing Africa has always done. Africa has always the frog, you know, into the next generation technology, you know. So currently, and one of the things driving the, the, the perverse, perversive deployment of fintech in Africa is one, the, the broadband penetration, which is really impressive. And then again, those who understand the African market know that there has to be some level of financing to make acquiring of asset possible. You know, there has to be some integration of, say, buy, buy now and pay later. You know, so so within that space, Africa just don't start from the beginning because we come late. We just jump at a recent, the most advanced technology, and we just ride on from there. You know, so, yeah. So talking about the applicabilities of some of this technology, are we actually ready for some of them? I don't know. But one thing I know is that the market will tell you the technology that is ready. You know, so you when you deploy and you see the asset hands, you will know that we're ready, right? <laughs> so the true test of, you know, a true test of, um, of, 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 of readiness of the market is acceptance, is whether people are accepting and embracing this technology. But I will tell you that Africa is, Africa has also advanced, and then our taste for advancement has also increased over the years. You know, so right now you will see, Currently, I, I have a product integrated on my platform that I use for a binary operator that does pretty much uses AI, gather data from social media, gather data from banking, doesn't just use credit score alone, also tries to see the character of this person on social media, just about anywhere they can get access to information to determine the credit worthiness of a person. You know, that's pest and pay with spectre. You know, so Africa is, I think, to a large extent, Africa is quite ready for some of this technology, even in terms of human development. 
You know, so we're getting to the place where you will see a lot of the technology deployed just by local people, deployed by local people, conceptualized, deployed, and then marketed, taken to the market by people, homegrown technology by local people. Yeah. Thanks, Opiani. I, I just be honest, I, I couldn't be more excited, notwithstanding, notwithstanding what we're seeing, the market turbulence, the macroeconomic issues that we're all facing, notwithstanding that, I can be more excited about where this continent is going to go. You know, I've heard it many times, I fully agree with it. This is going to be Africa's century. Yeah. And when I think about AI, AI works the best with mass number of data, mass number of trials of learning. AI should not be called artificial intelligence. It is going to be Africa intelligence. I'm always wow, calm. I'm, 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 I'm serious. I'm positive that AI is African intelligence, and that's going to lead the continent uh, to the next level. So, Obiemi, uh, let's talk about talent. Do you think talent is ready to take on this this opportunity, this challenge? You know that that yeah. fintech, as you're describing, renewable energy, yes, agriculture, yes. I mean, there's so many applications. Are you seeing that there's enough talent? around yeah you, you're spot on it's, it's a big concern uh first off because yeah our educational institution are not the curriculum that they, are, that they currently are using is um, outdated you know so most african country have outdated curriculum and then um, so that is a big challenge however however africa is rich in vibrant and intelligent minds, you know, young minds, young vibrant and uh, intelligent minds, you know, and then they they then start to look for because they have access to internet just like anybody in the global village, right? So they they know the difference, the deficit of the educational institution, and so they are covering for it for it personally, taking on personal development. I will tell you when I was in university as well, I started my CCNA, you know. You know, in my penultimate um, level, when I was in part four, my in my school we have five years for engineering. In my part four, I became you know, I mean, a, a, a network associate already. I was already I was acquiring skills needed in the industry, even while I was in the four walls of university. So what I figured is most young Africans are acquiring the skills outside of the classroom, university classroom. You know, and so Africa currently remains the biggest place for tech talents. You know, there's a massive drove of people, we call it Jagba in Nigeria right now. There's a massive movement of people from Africa to UK, to Canada, to US, and to other. I mean, I almost got poached by Facebook last year, you know, almost. You know, so there are young, a lot of young Africans are taking their place. In the in, in in the global village, because not because you know, and there, and, I, and I know that the disadvantages are there, right? You know, lack of infrastructure, poor education, poor curriculum. But what these guys, what these young minds are doing, is to chase this talent wherever it is on the internet. One of it is by subscribing to a ten times one thousand program, and then learning all these skills, and then you go home to then deepen those skills and own it and then take it to the market and start solving problems with it. So I, I'm, I'm very, very uh, optimistic at the future of young people in Africa. In spite of the poor leadership of the countries in Africa, young Africans are chasing talent and skills wherever it is, you know, using their resources and then they're becoming better for it, yeah. A lot of passion there, Opeyemi. It is Thanks. something that I'm sure is very personal, but you know we see it all around us uh, all day long. And and yeah. you know whether it's diaspora coming back to Africa, which we're seeing a lot of that as well. Exactly. I, I you know, really encouraging, really encouraging. And right. I think the there is a lot of building, a lot of building that needs to be done and will be done by this young yeah. talent that's coming back to Africa. So um, let's talk about your ten times one thousand experience, Open. What what did you find interesting? If you could think about, like, say, one of the lessons or or even a specific topic that you thought, hey, that was great, something that I can use or I'll open my mind. What struck yeah. you? 
so so one of the things that I enjoyed in the program, like I, I told um, Tyra, you know, that's one of the biggest things I love were the cases. You know, the cases were so exciting. They are market ready concepts. You know, you could actually take those concepts and start to deploy, you know, wherever you are in the world, right? So they are, you know, you're seeing how people are using technology to solve, you know, issues in Philippines, in in in, in, in different parts of the world, in the Latin America world and all that. And, and you're seeing, you know, how it can be applied, especially in a developing environment, in a developing market as, as hard as well. You know, so one of the things I learned are those market ready concepts in those cases. They are top notch, powerful cases that you could actually take from wherever it is and start to deploy. The second thing are the people. You know, I met Donye, I met, I think I've spoken with you as well. You know, I've met, um, you know, Yimfa, I met Annabelle, met a, a whole lot of 10, 10 times, 1,000 people. They're very great people. They're very humble. They're very, they know their, they know their thoughts. They know their skills. They are very skillful, you know, affable people that you can approach and talk with. You know, I have a chat with them any day on WhatsApp. Just, they're very open people. You will see that they're young people who are open to also, you know, to impact their world and, and you know, drop, you know, what they have as well, you know, on the, on, on the sand of time, you know. So that's quite exciting for me when I see young people like, my, my, like myself from different parts of the world. And, you know, in the, in the expert program, we did a capstone and, and I saw a lot of people, I, 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 have a, I, had, I had a friend from Egypt, from Philippines, from different part of the world and we're working together to solve problem. That's for the expert program, not the um, program, not the um, foundation program flex, right? You know, so, but the point I'm trying to make is, it's such a uh, rich content, rich classroom as well, very intelligent people in the class, you know, and then you enjoy that, uh, that spread of demography, young, middle-aged people, exciting people to work with. You know, so if you're on this call and you wanna do, a fintech course, you want to have an idea of what is happening in the fintech space. I would strongly recommend 10 times 1,000, you know, you know, because I've actually done a fintech program with, with side business school, Oxford, you know, and which was great, you know, but what I found exciting about this is the fact that, like I said, the cases were spot on. It's more like somebody throwing their ideas at you and say, wake up and start deploying. This is, these are things you can start to use, right? You know, so, so it's such an exciting I could go on and on talking about ten thousand, but let me just stop there, Jason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, gl I'm glad we're recording this because I'm gonna keep that as one of our best testimonials that we've ever had. And uh, right. I, I, yeah, I, I don't want to talk about it too much because you know, let's save some for the learners. Get get on the platform and learn. I I'll, I'll say this. Uh, you're exactly right. Some of the cases, the fr especially the frameworks that yeah. some of the lecturers. Uh, Vince is one of them. Uh, Ranga is another. I I literally took I me myself. I took a screenshot of it, and I started to apply it to our teams. Exactly. Right. And and it, it so anyway, quite powerful because it's it's ready to go. Um, I think we're about time. Uh, let me let me stop here and to hear. Let me know. Are, are we going to see if there's any Q and A's uh, for the audience? Yeah, we definitely will. Um, also, just to reassure everyone, we're going to share the link via the chat at the end of the session and via email. Um, so we have one interesting question on the Q&A. Um, is there any correlation between the sort of 3D animation and TV industry with the fintech industry? OK, uh, let's see. Yes, Nana, I see your question. Uh, 3D animation, animation and TV. Okay. Yeah, so, I, I, there's a few issues here. Let me, I'll, I'll just kick it off uh, from my experience on on the China side. Okay, and on on TV. If you think about TV, if you think about online, if you think about content, uh, which is basically what you are talking about, you're uh, you're a producer of content. Um, the fintech industry can play uh, such a critical role in enabling the content industry to thrive. Um, many of you are users of YouTube, I'm sure, and all these different platforms that produce content. 
Netflix content producer, if there wasn't fintech solutions for you to pay for the content, it wouldn't be able to reach you, right? So I think one clear case is, is access to the consumer, making a convenient product. Uh, in China, we have uh, content at our, literally at our fingertips that we can consume. But at the same time, at the same time, fintech can also enable content creators, whether you're a small content creator, making your own music, your own videos, FinTech will allow you to get paid, those content creators. And that's only possible through trust. So possible through trust, leveraging technology. And that's what a lot of the FinTech players are doing today. Uh, another point, and this is an emerging one, blockchain technology, right? So if we think about blockchain technology, most of us think of it being tied to cryptocurrencies. Right? It's the underlying technology that allows cryptocurrencies to exist. But blockchain is also allowing a huge industry, which is called the creatives, to verify. Right. So this is, this is something that's emerging, and we've been testing it in different markets. So if you think about a Picasso, right, this amazing one-of-a-kind piece of artwork, how do you know it's real? How can you prove that that is real? How can you trace where it's been, uh, all of the history? So blockchain today is currently being used to support the creative industry in protecting its authenticity, right? How do you know it's authentic? So I think that's another ex extremely exciting place that we'll see it develop. Uh, so let me stop here and I'll turn over to OPM. Oh yeah, so so you killed it, you nailed it, um, Jason. So one of the things, um, one of the drivers, when you see things that are growing, you would also know that um, that 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 things driving the growth of fintech. Like I said, internet penetration is one of it, you know. And then what that um, helps the three D and the TV industry or content industry is also that the medium for streaming their services is also made available. And so they can build on top of that, just like FinTech is building on top of internet penetration, you know, these TV and content um, and companies can also build on that. You know, before now, Netflix was not looking into Africa, but recently Netflix does not have a choice, but to come to Africa, you know, and all of the competitors of Netflix are also in Africa. You know, the, the, the Amazon Prime, Prime Wave or whatever is also in Africa. A lot of them are now in Africa as well, you know, so, so which shows that, you know, you know, Africa is ready for that market, you know, so, and then Africa then, and FinTech can then also enables the payments, you know, give you wide range of payment options that you can make um, and payment access those services. And one of the ways, the reason, one of the reasons why these companies were not in Africa was also what I just alluded to so payments, you know, they could not, you know, they could not make payments uh, when they, I mean, I mean, why would you have made payments to Amazon in the U.S. if there is no robust um, fintech industry in Nigeria where you are able to remit those monies back to and then reconcile and that reconciliation process with, with those international companies, right? You know, so, but because of the progressive development of fintechs in, in Africa, you could see that these companies are then finding their ways into Africa to say, okay, now Africa is ready for our market. Thank you so much, Opeyemi and Jason. Uh, Nana, I hope that you uh, got a lot of benefit and you were taking notes for that very in-depth answer from the team. Um, so we have some questions from Habib. So I'll answer the first one. Uh, the website, it says that the application is based on a referral and a code. So you are 100% correct, but we have a special partner code from ABH. So if you follow the link Michael sent in the chat, you should be able to apply. We're also going to send that out via email, but our code expires on the 31st of October. So don't delay, get your application in ASAP um, to take advantage of this free program. Um, and then Jason, I'm going to hand over to you for Habib's second question on, is it mandatory to do the foundation first before the expert, or can he apply directly for the expert program? Thanks to Hira. Habib, it is true. Uh, it is mandatory to complete foundation before you go into expert. Uh, we do that 
because we want to maintain the consistency among our alumni in our community that they have seen, they have gone through a certain uh, similar amount of content and courses. Um, so it, it gives basically everyone on the same, same playing field. Uh, so yes, it is mandatory that you complete foundation. After that, you then have access to expert and everything else that we'll be developing. Uh, so every year you can expect that 10 times 1000 is gonna come up with new courses uh, at least several years. And we'll keep updating. We have a lot. We have a lot to. We have a lot to cover. Um, you know, people have asked me, "Can we do a whole thing on digital banking?" Sure, absolutely. You know, Ant Group. We have two digital banks: one in Hong Kong, one in Singapore. We have some experience in the space, to say the least. And we can work with partners on developing. What does that look like? People have asked me, "Can we do something on rural finance? Uh, can we do something on ag finance? Right, fintech for agriculture." Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so um, foundation will give you the keys essentially to open up the doors to all these different topics that we'll be discussing. Thank you so much, Jason. And if the foundation program giving you the keys isn't motivation enough, OPME did share that he found that foundation program super beneficial on its own. Yeah. So definitely take advantage of the ABH referral code, get your applications in and get going on the program. Um, I started it, it was super interesting. So you, you can definitely, a lot of benefits and a lot of um, new benefits that are still gonna come as the programs build out and we get new ones added. Um, do we have any other questions for Jason and Okoyemi or the 10 times 1000 team? So here, maybe I'll just close and, and just say, you know, we're, we're looking to start a movement in FinTech and Okoyemi, uh, our lectures are support, no, none of them are paid. No. Um, we from Ant Group started this as a philanthropic initiative because we agreed with the IFC that as Ant Group, and we've been doing FinTech for 19 years, if we're gonna be a leader in the space, we gotta be able to help develop the global community. So, we, we, we took that to heart. And the way that we're gonna do this is also with the community. So in the future, we're gonna find like-minded experts that are gonna be our lecturers. Uh, we're gonna ask people like OPM and yourselves, alumni, to bring your friends into the community to share. Um, it's not gonna be 10 times 1000 pushing everything out. Uh, but I think if we can design it well, right? If we can be sort of this catalyst in this platform, really we can start a movement and that is a global FinTech community that's working together in a very, very challenging industry, but one of huge promise. And from what we've seen so far, just to be honest, FinTech is happening in pockets. Yeah, you know, Ant Group is doing this over here and you know, everyone's got their own little pockets, but you know, one thing is very, very certain is that at least regulators in the industry, they're all starting to converge. They're all learning from one another. Yeah. So what had happened in China maybe three, four years ago, some of that stuff is probably gonna happen in Africa. Some of the things that happened in the US last year is probably gonna to start to happen in Africa as well. So if we're not consciously looking, interacting, cooperating, uh, I think we're gonna be in a worse, worse off space. And, and so that's really what this mission is all about, if I really boil it down. So at the end of the day, it's all about the community and we look forward to building it together. Thank you so much, Jason. Again, thank you so much, Opeyemi, for joining us today. And well, at AVH, we can't reiterate enough, the power of community is something incredible. So join this 10 times 1000 community while it's getting started. Because as Jason said, it's gonna go places if we work together. So sign up with our referral link. Remember 31st of October is the cutoff date. So get on that because these programs are completely free and they're an incredible resource that you, you're getting at your fingertips. So use them, they're gonna help you. They're gonna help your business. They're gonna help your personal life. Um, thank you again, everyone for joining us and keep an eye out for our email where we're gonna send the code again. Great, thank you everybody. Thank you, OPME. Yeah, bye everyone. Thanks. Appreciate bye it. everyone.